All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's yeah, it's your boy's turn to take a stab at the Intel ASIC hash rate spitball game. That's right. You've probably seen Son of a Tech and Bits Be Trippin take their best educated guess as to what the possible hash rate could be of a future Intel ASIC. Well, it's my turn now. Stay tuned. All right, without further ado, be sure that you are subscribed. Click all the buttons down below or smash them as needs be. And let's jump straight into it. This is some information that came courtesy of Bits Be Trippin. Huge shout out to Michael Carter, such a generous and giving guy, always reaching out to the community to try to be educational and, well, you know, helpful, just generally useful person. So we're taking a look at some of the calculations that he has here, the formula he has here, and he's listed here that the Intel BZM or uh, yeah, B BZM1 chip is currently listed at 170 giga hash per second. That's I think that was a typo. I don't think that was intentional. But currently on the leak from Anon Tech, that model is actually listed as only being 137 giga hashes. So uh, probably just an oversight, an honest mistake. Uh, Carter clearly gives away so much information. He's probably forgotten more than most of us will ever know about mining. So I uh, can, can forgive the guy, uh, you know, an honest typographical error there. But I'm going to go ahead and correct that for this spreadsheet here and show you 137 giga hashes per second per chip. And if you haven't watched this video, I think it's worth a watch. 30 minutes of uh, time well spent if you're into ASIC mining or you're curious about some potential performance numbers for this model. But compares the BM1362 chip that is listed here as the, the basic chip that's within the Bitmain S19J Pro, the 104 terahash model, the S19J Pro, not the S19JXP, which is 140 terahash and beyond that actually doesn't use the same seven nanometer chip. It is technically a five nanometer chip. It's a very, very different machine, actually, fundamentally from, uh, yeah, from the chip on outward. It's a very different design, very similar form factor, but very different design at its core. It's why it has that vastly increased efficiency uh, to begin with. But at seven nanometers right now, the BZM1 promises to be even more efficient than these based on the TSMC N5, uh, five nanometer process. Now the TSMC N5, uh, well, <laughs> asterisk, asterisk, it might be slightly different, not sure yet, but it's, uh, but it's currently being rumored to be a TSMC five nanometer process for the BZM2 chip. So we'll talk about that in just a minute. But for right now, I just wanted to go over some of the numbers based on what we do know, which is the seven nanometer process by Intel is 137 giga hashes per second per chip. And as Bitsy Trippin alleged in his video, if it's the same chip count on this upcoming ASIC product, whatever uses the Intel chip versus say the S19J Pro, then we can expect kind of similar performance characteristics as you see broken down here, possibly a little over 45 tera hashes for that device at a TDP of around 855 watts, which is just amazing means anybody at, at home could use residential power and plug one of these into every major circuit in their home. So everywhere you have your TV or you know lights plugged in, you could definitely plug in one of these and it wouldn't be too difficult for users at home to start mining. I think this would be a massive boon to decentralization of hash rate if we did see this. But the more likely scenario, as Carter mentioned in his video, is that there's going to be an ASIC manufacturer that uses these chips and tries to drive the core TDP up to about parity with the current top of the line, the S19J Pro. Why? Because there's so many mining facilities that already have three kilowatts run to each one of these machines over here, the, uh, the Bitmain machine. I'm gonna go ahead and just write that out so it's less confusing, S19J Pro. Um, but, but there's so many mining facilities that already have this amount of power run to each individual unit that it makes sense for whoever creates an ASIC based on this new Intel uh, BZM1 design to do the same. Oh wow, you know what? I actually <laughs> got a little bit too excited here. I, I wrote that correctly, BZM. So here's, I'm just calling it the BZM extra thick model. And with those de uh, the decreased performance figures, right? The 137 giga, 137 giga hash per second, uh, it requires just a little, uh, you're getting a little bit less hash rate for that same amount of power consumed, even though they consume only 
2.5 watts per chip. Um, it's it's still quite efficient, quite efficient. But in order to fill that same power pipeline, we're, we're at, we are getting a little bit less performance versus the 170 giga hash that was mentioned over in Carter's video. Uh, but using all the same math, or roughly the same math, uh, and then of course writing in some numbers, I've factored about a 20% a overclock. I think that's possible. Uh, rather, we don't know what's possible. So it could be possible that a 30% overclock with a non-linear increase in power is something that people can do with this new Intel chip. We we're not sure yet. There are various different ASICs are, are either good at overclocking or sometimes it's a, it's a little bit of a mixed bag with overclocking ASICs. Uh, you can never can tell. In a silicon, for example, has a very different success rate of overclocking versus bitmain. And then even within the bitmain, various uh, SHA-256 models, uh, each successive generation can be slightly different in its ability to overclock. So we don't know that yet, but I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to, I'm going to shoot for the moon here and see if we can do maybe a 20% overclock. Uh, so we're looking at if that, that base for, uh, for 342 chips, if that, if that base configuration yields about 46 terahash, then we're looking at maybe 56 terahash with that 20% overclock. If we go with the extra thick model and we have you want to fill a three kilowatt pipeline for the base configuration, but get a little over that, about three and a half kilowatts. Then we're looking at almost 200 terahash, just, just shy of 200 terahash, fully overclocked. And we're, we're looking at pulling out all the stops for this with only uh, uh, 1,197 chips, and around 1,200 chips there. Uh, we're looking at, yeah, looking at just uh, around three and a half kilohash. We don't know if that's going to require liquid immersion cooling or, or what that'll take to get that kind of performance, pull out, uh, pull out that kind of performance from an ASIC like this. But I think that this is possible. Let me also kind of throw this concept at you guys watching right now. I think it's about high time that ASIC stopped looking like these two little boxes that you see to my side right here. And with these, uh, these increased performance profiles, and especially with the move towards having roughly three kilohash plus per device, and kind of requiring, basically requiring 240 volt power to be run to these machines. I think it's high time we started shoving these things into a proper 4U rack mount server case. I want to see Bitmain and other manufacturers do that. With the S19J Pro, for example, it's far taller than what you see here. So with one more stack with the, you know, maybe, maybe one more, uh, one more head of those those ASICs the way that the S19J Pro does right now, and you could practically just turn it sideways and have it fit into a 4U shape anyway. But I think that these ASIC manufacturers should just go that route. You got Intel in on the game. You have serious subsidies. You got serious welcoming uh, legislation in states like Texas and Wyoming. I think that we're finally in the kind of environment in a regulatory sense, and in terms of just sort of friendliness towards mining here in the States that I think we should start seeing a sort of a dovetailing between crypto mining and traditional data center usage. There are plenty of data centers that could accommodate crypto mining. And so I just don't see why we why we keep shying away from that. I, I moved to just see more ASICs in that, that typical 4U or 6U rack mount configuration. But you tell me in the comments, what do you think? Do you think you'd like to see an ASIC fit into a 4U, typical 4U case in a rack mount. I think that'd be a great thing, but you tell me in the comments, guys, tell me down below. And I think that's what this this proposed, I mean, I'm just calling it the BZM1 extra thick. That's what I think it could do at about that three and a half kilohash of power consumed. I think it could very easily fit into that rack mount uh, case. And of course, the way that mining operations go, there's nothing stopping anyone from just very simply putting that onto a uh, high high density uh, storage racks the way that so many of these facilities are built right now. There's nothing stopping them from doing that in the same way that many of them just had to turn their S19J Pros on their side to be able to fit in the spots where their older S9s used to fit. But you tell me in the comment section, do you think that's a good, a good move? Do you think it's a bad move? But before I let you guys go, let's talk about Let's talk about the real event here. This is what I actually wanted to talk to you about. And first off, um, there's more to it than just these seven nanometer parts. There was also a five nanometer part announced in Anand Tech's little uh, and reveal here. And that's the BZM2. 
The BZM2, again, is ostensibly going to be on the TSMC 5 nanometer process. It could be something else. We don't know yet. That's the current rumor right now. We don't know the efficiency. We don't know the power. We don't know the hash rate. So now I'm definitely in spitball territory. We are way, way off the, the beaten path, way off the map here. So guys, humor me and do hit that thumbs up because we're about to act stupid here. Really, we're, we're, we're about to get crazy. So uh, hit those thumbs ups in case I don't see you again. All right. So looking back at this list here, guys, we got the five nanometer uh, BZM2. Let me reveal some of what I think over here. This is potential, uh, what I think are potential performance characteristics for this five nanometer part. What makes me think that we could potentially take such a quantum leap forward, right? 500 giga hash per second is a lot. Obviously, you don't need me to tell you. It's a lot. But when you look at 500 giga hash per second at a roughly 342 chip count on this same form factor as an S19J Pro, well, guess what? That brings us to about 170 terahash with overclock of about 205 terahash. What does that look like? It looks an awful lot like it's a step ahead of the S19 JXP at 140 terahash at only about three kilohash, it's far more efficient than its predecessor, the S19 J Pro. And it is built on the TSMC N5 node, right? So we're, we're already looking at a far more efficient chip here. Now imagine when Intel takes their design Right? I realize that it's the seven nanometer Intel node, but you've got the Intel design potentially being fabbed on the TSMC N5 node. What are the possibilities for improvement in efficiency? I, I don't know. I don't pretend to be an expert in this space, but after just spending a couple of minutes with this data set and taking a look at some of the possibilities for the future, I can't imagine that Intel would get into this space release something like this BZM1 at this current efficiency level, already smacking down the competition without taking a look at really reaching for that brass ring of a, of a vastly overperforming chip like this. And currently, if you break down these same numbers, if you reverse engineer the hash rate versus the chip count, you look at a hash rate, you're going to see a hash rate of roughly 410 giga hash per second for the S19 JXP. It, that's just how the numbers break down right now. So to go beyond 410, we, I, who knows, maybe it's more conservative than that. But I think there's a very real possibility that on the high end, just like, you know, swinging for the fences, that Intel, the BZM2 may get somewhere in the vicinity of 480, all the way up to 500 gigahash per second, like we see here. So that for, yeah, for every couplet, you're, you're getting a full terahash. Uh, I know it seems crazy, I know it seems like just insane, but I, I think there's the very real possibility that that's what we're going to see in the next generation of ASICs. So at about 171 terahash at, at 2.7 kilowatts, and then just over 200 terahash at over 3 kilowatts. Now, again, it could be that this isn't linear either, but it could be it's about 3.5 kilowatts or even 4 kilowatts to be able to achieve this uh this level of performance here because i'm also leaving the power consumed at around the same amount that the bitmain s19 j xp currently consumes i just rounded it up to eight watts i don't i mean yes technically this one's a 7.99 but we'll just call it eight we'll call a spade a spade this one is just eight so i think we're in we're in pretty uh, we're in some pretty gnarly territory here as far as performance moving up. I mean, you figure the last couple of years, we've gone from the S9 Pro at only 13 terahash to now 10 times the performance on the S19 JXP, right at, at, at 140 terahash per second. So I don't think it's totally uh, inappropriate to talk about this massive leap forward in performance, but let's go farther, okay? Let's go, let's go pedal to the metal here and talk about a potential different form factor at this performance level with the BZM2 by Intel. The BZM2 extra thick. So here, if we have that same chip count as before for a different form factor, and not because we're trying to flood the same amount of power consumption that is, that is a uh, or amount, amount of power consumed by the S19J Pro, but because we're trying to match a form factor 
of roughly a 4U rack mount case, or maybe a 6U rack mount case. And if you remember, not that long ago, Bitfury released some miners that were that form factor. This is not unheard of, but Bitfury has had Bitcoin ASICs that have fit sort of that physical profile. So I don't think it's inappropriate to talk about that either. So yeah, I realize we're in uncharted territory here, but I think this is entirely possible based on things that have happened or based on things that we've observed. I think it's possible for us to break way past that 400 giga hash per second mark per chip. Um, and this is on the extreme end, right? But with that same performance profile here at about eight watts and about 500 giga hashes per second, but increasing that chip count to be able to really flood a certain form factor, now we're looking at nearly 600 terahash all in one machine, just big, massive machine. And we're looking at nearly nine and a half kilowatts of power consumed. And then if we really crank that up and get into that 20% overclock territory, if that's even possible. Again, I know we're talking about pie in the sky here. So, you know, so uh, basically, forgive me, because now we're talking about the, the overclocked numbers of the S19 JXP are 140 terahash, and that is 410 gigahash per second when it's overclocked right there. So I realize that we're, we're going way beyond the pale here, but you know, hear me out. Let's just say that we, we get to that point. Now we're looking at nearly 12 kilowatts of power consumed. What is 12 kilowatts of power? Let's just take a, do some numbers here, right? So 50 amps times 240 volts. <gasps> you got 12 kilowatts. Hmm. Now you don't have 12 kilowatts at 80% uh, at load factor. It is much more, it's much more heavy load on that circuit. But on a 100 amp whip or on a 50 amp whip at 240 volts, you can see how this might be attractive to have just one of these machines that is on that one circuit. Potentially, I think that this is within the realm of possibility for some of these same facilities, larger groups that want to just hash heavier, put it in one machine, flip the thing on and know that they're off to the races. I think that we are finally nearing, uh, we're nearing that corner that's going to be turned where we do see a leap ahead. Maybe it isn't like this, right? Where it's almost, almost seven times the performance of its nearest competitor, right? That does, it does seem ridiculous. I, I, I know this seems ridiculous, guys. I know that. Um, but double the performance? Does that really seem all that out of the ordinary? That shouldn't, right? So, yeah, I think that there is a very real possibility that we are going to see performance just go through the roof. But I realize I'm talking about hyperbole pie in the sky, but I don't know. Let me ask you guys, do you think, is this pie in the sky? Do you think there's a possibility we could see numbers that really start to uh, start to go parabolic, no, not parabolic, but just you know, really into new one map territory as we move towards predominantly TSMC N5 parts or you know just five nanometer parts in the ASIC space? Tell me in the comment section, guys. I appreciate you watching all the way to the end. Carter, if you're watching this, I really appreciate all of the excellent work that you do for the community. And I did create this as derivative work. So I know I stand on the shoulders of a giant. So I really appreciate you, big brother. You're just awesome. Guys, thanks for watching to the end. Appreciate you being subscribed. I love your face. I will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching all the way to the end of the video. Be sure to like and subscribe and then check out mineyour.biz to sign up for Mine Your Biz Insiders, our exclusive newsletter where we talk about all kinds of mining deals, crypto-oriented deals, security deals, privacy deals, and everything that we can't personally bring you here on the channel but can talk to you about in email. Also, check out our swag shop where you can see the Mine Your Biz phone. You can also see dedicated sites for Bitcoin, Monero, and other meme coin swag, as well as our friends over at Flux Network. All right, guys, thanks for watching the end. You know I love your face. Remember to stay private and mind your biz.